All right, guys, welcome to the first live stream of Earth Nails and Tails. My name's Phil, and today we're gonna be harvesting our potatoes and the sweet potatoes that we planted this spring and the start of early summer. So pretty exciting. Um, the first thing before we get into digging up the potatoes and the sweet potatoes, I just wanna show you what these plants look like, which is giving us an indication actually um, when we're supposed to be digging them up. Um, so we did have a frost a couple days ago, which helped us out a little bit. Um, but ideally, you want to wait until the plants or the greenery of the plants are actually dying off. And that's going to be your best indicator. Um, or you can dig up the soil a little bit and look at the actual size of the tuber. Those are really the two things that you can do. Um, but the plants dying off is really the best indication because you know the roots are going to be somewhat established. And if there's no vegetative growth on top of the roots, there's no way that those potatoes can grow anymore. So at that point, you want to get them out of the ground so they're not rotting in the ground. All right, so I'm going to show you guys what the plants look like. So here's our sweet potatoes. Um, so we planted these back in May. And as you can see, they're starting to brown up a little bit here. Um, this was from the frost. So if it didn't frost, they'd probably be going a little bit longer. But now that they're browning up from the frost and also thanksgiving is in three weeks and i thought it would be great to be able to have our own sweet potatoes eat our own sweet potatoes and during thanksgiving um so that would be or is a reason why another reason why that we're doing this today so this is what the sweet potatoes look like so not quite there vegetative wise but if we go right here as you can see here's one of the sweet potatoes these tubers are looking very nice so that's why I'm going to be harvesting those today. And then going over here, um, we have our potato plants. And as you can see, the, uh, the vegetation is dying off. A, lo a lot of brown here. And then there see, there is still some green here on this plant. Um, I planted these about two feet apart each. So, you know, this one has some green. So it's probably going. So I may not pick this one yet. Um, but other ones I may pick. Same thing with this year. These are still green. They're pretty small though, so we'll see how the other ones look around it since I did plant them around the same time. Um, we'll see how the other ones look, and if they're looking good, then I might just pick these as well because they're probably going to be around the same size. So let's let's get into it. And if you guys have any questions along the way, feel free to type it up, and then we'll check just so we can answer any of your questions because obviously this is, you know, exciting because it's an educational thing, but also we have no idea what we're gonna get, right? It's not like, oh, I could see my lettuce, like I know what my lettuce looks like, I know I'm gonna get, but for the potatoes, they're underground, we have no idea what we're gonna get. So that's that's why we kind of want to do this live stream just to show you, you know, we're not successful every time. You know, it takes a lot of effort to be successful and especially when you're just starting out. So I wanna show you guys not to be discouraged and keep trying until you are successful, so. So let's get into it. I want to do the sweet potatoes first just because I haven't harvested sweet potatoes before. This is actually my first year growing them. Um, and then we'll do the potatoes second. We did harvest some potatoes earlier this year, which was pretty fun. Um, they weren't as big as I would like, which is why we actually did a second crop. But most people normally just do potatoes or do one potato harvest a year. Um, so these were planted a little bit later, so they're probably not going to be as big. Um, but we can save some of those for seed potatoes next year, or we can just cook them up, you know, uh, slice them in half and use them as, as baby potatoes. So yeah, let's, uh, so I know we're, we're gonna get some sweet potatoes here, so I'm gonna save these for last. Um, so I'm gonna head back here, because we did plant four or five plants, I'm not sure exactly how many we planted. Um, so I'm gonna head back here first, just to see what we've got. But what I'm gonna try to do now is try to find the base of each plant. Um, it's gonna be a little bit difficult. So for those of you that don't know, sweet potatoes are actually part of the morning brewery family. And what happens is they grow vines and they'll grow and they'll reroot and they'll grow and they'll reroot. So it can be hard to find the base of the plant sometimes. Um, but again, I have an idea of where they're at. So. But regardless, oh, here we go. Here's a small one, a little baby sweet potato. So most people think that 
Um, when you plant sweet, sweet potatoes, you don't plant this and it grows into a plant. You actually have to grow a, what is called a sweet potato slit. And you basically take a sweet potato and um, you let it sit in water for a few weeks. And then it actually starts to grow some vegetative growth. And then once it's big enough, you cut that off and you take that vegetative growth, which almost looks like a small version of this. So if I were to break this off, it would kind of look like this. You'd put, stick that in water and it would start to grow roots. That's what you actually plant. And then once the roots get bigger, they turn into sweet potatoes. So the sweet potato is the root of the plant. And you have to have a new sweet potato plant in order to grow sweet potatoes. So yeah, these plants are definitely not ready, but we're getting frost, so we gotta get them anyway. I think these are the cutest sweet potatoes that I've ever seen. But again, those might be really good to use for um, creating sweet potato slips for next year. And as I said before, how um, they reroot every time the morning glory or every time the sweet potato plant reroots itself, it's gonna grow more tubers there. So we can have sweet potatoes all down this thing and not even know it. So I just gotta do my best to work through the soil. Here we go, I think a bigger one here. There we go. This is a good size one. Very beautiful color. Nice deep orange red. You see a little bit of flesh here. So yeah, that's, that's a pretty happy with that one. Here we go, here's gonna be a bunch more. There's another one. You pick these sweet potatoes, you can just eat them. Um, but uh, it's our baby saying hi. Um, but you actually, if you want to preserve them for a long period of time, like you go to the store, you see like a bunch of sweet potatoes, you know, those are cured. So, yeah, I'm very, very happy with it so far. Um, but the way that you cure these is at high temperature, preferably in high humidity, um, and they'll cure the fastest around 90 degrees. So, what you'll do is leave them in a nice shady spot but it's still um outside in high temperatures and high humidity mm -hmm. and they'll cure that way in around a week as the temperatures get lower it takes longer and longer to cure so since the daytime temperatures now are now around you know, 70 75 degrees on a high point it's going to take about three weeks for these to cure which is partially why i wanted to get them out today because thanksgiving is three weeks from today so should be perfect timing. But yeah, I mean, these, there's a bunch in here, so it's gonna take me a little while to get through all of them. So there you go, there's the root. There's a good example of the, the long root that actually forms. Oh, <laughs> look at that thing. Oh, wow. I don't even know what to say to that. Look at this. It's as big as my head. This one has some deformations in it, though, so it does look like it got a little bit of rot to it. But that's insane. I would never have expected that. That's incredible. That's the elephant one. Let's see what else we got around here. I don't think anything's gonna beat that. Some more. So yeah, I mean, for the first time growing sweet potatoes, I'm super happy with this. I mean, this is the stuff, you know, when you get a good harvest or a good crop, this is what makes you wanna keep doing it, right? Oh, here's a, gonna be another one. Wow. Amazing. So yeah, I mean, this is like, you know, doing the research, putting in the time and the effort to grow these. Look at that. Crazy. We're gonna have to weigh these later too. It's gonna take me a while. Yeah. Um, but getting this result is just definitely what makes you want to keep doing it, right? So just, you know, we've been doing this for five, six years. And you just gotta keep trying and trying and trying. Because honestly, every year is different as well. Um, 
Every year, different things grow better. That's why you plant a diversity of plants. So that way, no matter what, whenever something doesn't work out well, like this year, our broccoli did not do well at all. Um, but we had other things that did do really well. So that's why you plant a diversity of crops and you'll have success. So this year was definitely like a learning experience for these. But what I found is that sweet potatoes like really, really rich soil. So if you see, like look at the soil, Look how dark it is. It's very, very dark. There's a lot of compost in the soil. And the sweet potatoes like the nutrition, but they also like to have more consistent watering or um, moisture conditions. If you have soil that's going to dry, and wet, and dry, and wet, and dry, and wet, then you're gonna have sweet potatoes that are gonna have a lot of rot damage to them. So water, proper watering is probably one of the most important things Got some roots that are pretty deep in here. So here's a great example of the plant rerooting. You can see all these nice roots here. So the main root was over there, obviously, and then the vines kind of just went over and rerooted. And if we let these grow longer, these would all turn into sweet potatoes. The only bad side about this plant is, as you can see, it's very invasive. So if you do want to grow sweet potatoes, I would recommend setting up a separate space in your garden or your yard to grow these. Especially if you have a smaller space. But honestly, these things look really pretty too. And when they're in their season, um, morning glory, they're called morning glories because their flowers actually um, open up in the mornings and they have nice, pretty purplish pink flowers. So you can even use these as like a, a show, you know, showpiece, grow them in your front yard. They look pretty. So I think we're gonna have some more, some more significant ones back here. Sorry that you guys can't really see. You wanna move the camera over here? So. Yes, Neptune. What's up? There we go. Some more. Yeah, as I said before, not sure how many people are watching, um, but if you have any questions, be sure to put them in the comments of the video and we'll try to look at them periodically so that way we can answer them for you. Um, I prefer to keep the questions about the uh, potatoes or the sweet potatoes right now. Um, and if we have some time at the end, we can do some other questions. So the thing is with these, um, if I actually miss getting all these roots out, these might regrow here next year. So I have to try to do the best I can to get out all the tubers. Here we go. Here we go. There's another one. Pretty good size. Um, yeah, if I don't get all of these individual vines out, there's a good chance that these are going to grow back here next year. So I'll have to do my due diligence later to make sure I get them all out. Can you plant sweet potatoes twice a year? Can you, um, so I wouldn't recommend planting sweet potatoes twice a year unless you live in a warmer climate because they do take a very long time to mature. Um, these have, as I said earlier, these have been in the ground since May. And it's now November, yeah. so it's just showing you how long that it takes. You know, some of them only grew to this size. So this is not a crop that I would recommend growing more than once a year. Um, you might be able to put them in a little bit earlier if you're like starting them in a greenhouse or something, but they don't transplant very well. So just because of those reasons, the hassle, I would not grow them more than once a year. This is a, this is a long season crop. So it looks like I've gotten every, pretty much everything back here. So let's work our way back this way. I mean, look at that so far. I'm just guessing it's probably close to, I don't know, 
maybe 10 pounds. I really have no idea. No, honestly. So it looks like we have some more growing right here. So if you guys are um, interested in starting a new garden, something that we can present here for you. See, this one has a little bit of uh, rot going on to it, so this one probably had ins inconsistent watering. Um, but back to what I was saying, is that if you guys want to start a garden, one of the, and we did this method in here, which is why I'm thinking about it, um, look up lasagna gardening. And if you don't want to spend a bunch of money, or if you want to be more sustainable and not bring soil onto your property, um, you can use lasagna gardening, which is basically layering soil, the existing soil that you have with um, organic matter, such as leaves or straw, um, cardboard, newspaper, and you basically do like a layer of soil and then a layer of organic matter, another layer of soil, another layer of organic matter, and it turns into soil like this. So it turns into very, 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 very rich soil. Um, so if you want to start a garden, I highly, highly, highly recommend using that method. Let's move on to this bigger portion over here. It looks like this one actually started curing on its own. Oh, here we got more. Yeah, see how deep those roots go? We're gonna have to take a lot of time to get them cleaned up. Yeah, see, it looks like these started to cure. These look more like uh, sweet potatoes that you'd see in the store. And there is some greening of these here. Once potatoes get exposed to sunlight, especially regular potatoes, they start to turn green. And they actually create a toxic chemical. Um, and most people recommend not eating those potatoes. Because in high quantities, they are toxic to humans. In low quantities, it's okay. So if you have like a green potato that's slightly green, you can still eat it but it would be better to eat non green potatoes. So this root here, mass is, oh my goodness, look at this thing. Huge, what do you even do with this? <laughs> and there's a lot of ants living in here, so this probably isn't even a viable sweet potato, but I mean, look at that thing. It's crazy. So here we go, we got some, I mean, this one is still huge. Look at that. That root mass there was just insane. This is a huge sweet potato. Yeah, so I mean, we obviously have enough for Thanksgiving. We're probably gonna be making some pie out of these. You know, bake up, bake up the smaller ones and make some pie with the bigger ones. I feel like that's a good plan. So we got another one here. Awesome. Again, this one has got some uh, rock to it, but you know, you win some, you lose some. Especially when you're doing organic gardening, we're not using any pesticides or herbicides, everything. It's just natural soil. I do like to use some organic fertilizer um, that I get. I actually get it off Amazon, but it's um, all natural. It's um, fish bone meal, kelp meal, um, some guano from different types of animals. Um, so good stuff, but I'm actually trying to get away from using, using fertilizers. I'm trying to minimize my inputs as much as I can and try to uh, create everything that I put into the garden here. Which is gonna be a challenge, but just think about it. If you figure that out, you have potentially a one-time fee of establishing your garden and then every year after that it funds itself. I mean, this garden all in all probably a few thousand dollars over the course of five years. But I mean a few thousand dollar investment to grow food for a very, very long time. I mean, it's an investment. And don't get me wrong, we didn't do this all at 
this is the starting sequence. We like said four or five years to create. So. And something that I'm planning on doing next year is doing a um, expense list as well as documenting all of the food that we grow and how many pounds of it and prepare, preparing that for the cost of produce in the stores and just seeing like how profitable or like how much money are we actually saving from growing this garden. looking like it's it for now there might be some more in here but just for the sake of the video I'm gonna I think I'm gonna work on this last bit and then move on to the regular potatoes but I mean just look at this look at this harvest like these are like this whole thing is like as big as my torso I wouldn't be surprised if this was like close to 30 or 40 pounds of sweet potatoes and as I said, I'll measure it, and then I will, uh, I'm gonna be posting this video on YouTube as well, so if you wanna watch it again, or if you miss something during the live stream, um, I'm gonna be posting it on YouTube, and I'll definitely be putting it in the description of like how many pounds of potatoes we got, because it's just crazy. Hopefully this is the first of many live streams that we'll be doing here on our developing homestead. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed watching. I hope you learned something. And if you did, please like, comment, share. And if you go on YouTube, like, comment, subscribe. We want to help you guys be better gardeners. If you want to start your homestead, that's even more exciting. You know, try to provide as much as possible for you and your family. And that's what we're all about. That's what we're learning, trying to learn to do. So if you have any interest in that, you can also go to our website, earthnailsandtails.com. And you can go to the contact page and you can input your email there and i'd be more than happy to help you guys out along your journey again my name is phil this is earth nails and tails and i hope you guys have a great day thanks for watching